Let's look just a little closer at the gross anatomy of the lungs. So the lungs have two sides, the right side and the left side. The right lung is made up of three lobes, the superior, the middle, and the inferior lobe. And the left side is made up of two lobes, the superior and inferior. The reason the left lung only has two lobes is because the heart takes up a lot of space in the left side of the chest and the thorax. As you can see here, this is about the typical location of the heart. The carina, which is the split of the bronchus into the right and left bronchus, this is immediately posterior to the ascending aorta, which then turns and returns back down towards the feet. Another important feature to know regarding the lungs involves aspiration of foreign bodies. The right lung is the most common site for inhaled or aspirated foreign bodies to end up because that right main stem bronchus is more vertical and it's also wider than the left main stem bronchus. If a patient aspirates a foreign body while lying down on their back or in the supine position, you will usually see that foreign body enter the superior segment of the right lower lobe, which is in this region here. If a patient aspirates a foreign body while lying on their right side, that foreign body will usually enter the right upper lobe here. And as we just mentioned, when a patient is standing upright, that foreign body will usually enter the right lower lobe here. Let's move on and discuss the diaphragm. It's important to note as you remember where structures pass through the diaphragm that the diaphragm isn't flat. As you see in this picture, the diaphragm rests against the inferior portions of the lungs and will expand and contract from that normal resting position. This is an inferior view of the diaphragm looking at the underside of the diaphragm from the abdomen. As you can see, there are three openings in the diaphragm that allow structures to pass from the thorax into the abdomen. The location of these openings, especially the location in relation to the vertebrae, are very important. You see here the blue structure is the inferior vena cava. It also has the right phrenic nerve passing with it. This passes through the diaphragm at T8. Medially to that is the esophagus that passes through the diaphragm at T10. And posterior to that is the descending aorta that passes through at T12. Along with the aorta is the thoracic duct, the azygous vein. You can remember these structures using the mnemonic I eight ten eggs at twelve. So the inferior vena cava comes through at eight, the esophagus comes through at ten, the aorta and the thoracic duct come through at twelve. Also note that the diaphragm is innervated by the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve finds its roots in C3. C4 and C5. An easy way to remember this is that C3, C4, and C5 keep the diaphragm alive. This is also an important association as to why any pain from the diaphragm or irritation of the diaphragm, such as air, blood, infection, can be referred to the shoulder or around the C5 area because that is where the origination of the phrenic nerve comes from.